Um, so many uh, good people to thank. Uh, I do want to thank the search committee uh, for their um, very thoughtful uh, engagement with me over these months. Uh, Paul, thank you for co-chairing that. Um, my gratitude uh, must first be extended, though, to, uh, to my predecessors, to Father Eng and Father Rewak and Father Locatelli, on whose very broad shoulders uh, I stand, and whose prayers and mentorship I will continue to rely on. And I want to thank um, some of my guests here, some good people who have brought me into their families when I came to the Bay Area, uh, to my niece, Elizabeth, who is a student here, a proud Bronco, the O'Malley family, the Doors are here, uh, to Greg, uh, my roommate from college, who has wisely brought his son, Noah, to visit the campus. <laughs> He'll be applying soon, I can assure you. Well, I remember when I walked on this campus for the first time, it was about 15 years ago. And it is, for those of you who have not seen it watching online, one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. And I remember walking down the drive and seeing the Mission Church set up against this deep blue sky. And I said to myself that this place, gazing upon the Mission Church from afar, I said to myself that this place has roots. It has a center. And in my three years as dean, I have appreciated more and more the depth of the tradition that binds us all here together. Our tradition as a Catholic and Jesuit university committed to academic excellence, the care for each person, social justice, diversity in community, and the lively dialogue between faith and reason. But I've also experienced something new, how the vibrancy of Silicon Valley and the entre entrepreneurial spirit there animates all that we do here. All the new buildings that have sprung up over the last decade and the recent groundbreaking of what will be an unprecedented STEM complex in the heart of our campus, this growth spurt reflects a contagious energy and an optimism of the valley in which we sit. In those buildings, we learn in innovative ways and we strive always relentlessly for the next answer. We push the frontiers of knowledge as good universities do. And still there, the Mission Church stands. Amid the contagious spirit of the valley and the rapid pace of change around us, the mission reminds us that we have a tradition that grounds our striving. The Ohlone people who cultivated the land, fathers Occulte and Nobili who founded the college in 1851, they are part of the tradition here, as are the later generations who labored here and studied here and taught here and served here and played here and prayed here. The mission, the mission blends with the valley as if to borrow from the poet Seamus Haney, hope and history were rhyming. And here you and I stand now on ground made holy, not because of the buildings here, and let me assure you, they are beautiful buildings, but it is holy ground because of the people here. Over the last three years, and in the course of this very thoughtful search process, I've learned how much our exceptional faculty, our talented students, our dedicated staff, our passionate alumni care about this place. You soon will entrust me to care not just for a campus, but for a community from which everything else, our teaching, our research, our service, from that community, everything else flows. That's why we're here. That's why I want to be here. We have a lot of work to do to keep Santa Clara moving towards our bicentennial, which is not so far off. I can assure you that this will be a collaborative effort 
and one marked by transparency and clarity of conviction. We need such focus and collaboration because the challenges are great and the opportunities are many. Whether it's keeping pace with innovation in higher education and beyond, or ensuring greater access and affordability for a Santa Clara education, or seeking lasting reform in the church, we together are summoned for a future that is not entirely our own, but one that promises greatness. And we will reach greater national prominence. We will realize the ambitious goals of our current capital campaign. There will be rankings and fundraising totals and more distinguished fellowships to measure our progress. But in the end, the measure that will matter most, at least for a Jesuit university, is the lives we have impacted and the change that we have effected for the good of humanity, especially for those on the margins, and for the greater glory of God. Today, I am filled with such gratitude. I'm so grateful for the good people here on the main campus and for my colleagues and students watching up in Berkeley at our North Campus. I'm so grateful to my former colleagues in Washington, D.C., who watched from afar, and for my friends and former students around the country watching again online. Thank you. I'm grateful for my family, my sister Kathy in Denver, my brother Andy in South Florida. I thank my parents, who have who've loved me without condition and have given me so much, especially in education, and who, during their lifetimes, instilled in me values that ground me today. And I thank my Jesuit brothers. I thank you for your company over these years, for putting up with me at times. Thank you for how you have supported me and challenged me and encouraged me. Through the Jesuits, God has blessed me with a life beyond my imagining, a life that brings me here with you now. The spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola ends with a simple observation which is good for me and for all of us to hear now. If we are grateful for all that we have been given, then the most natural response is to give back. This, in the end, is what my appointment as president is about, as it was for Father Eng and Father Locatelli and Father Wewak and others Please know that I accept this honor as my way of giving back and of serving you and our shared mission. I ask for your prayers as I try to honor your trust in me. And may God bless us and Santa Clara University. Thank you. <laughs>